Okay, so how well do you actually understand basic math? Well, if you have pretty strong basic math skills, this should be a very easy problem to solve without the aid of a calculator. All right, so let's go to take a look at the problem, and here it is. We have parentheses 4 minus 6 times parentheses 6 minus 4 minus 1. All right, now this is a multiple choice question, and let's take a look at our answers. So A is negative 3, B is positive 3, C is negative 5, and D is a positive 5. All right, now the only rule, again, is no calculator. But if you can figure this out, well, go ahead and put your answer into the comment section. I'll show you the correct answer in just one second. Then, of course, we'll walk through exactly how to solve this problem without a calculator step by step. But uh, before we get started, let me quickly introduce myself. My name is John, and I have been teaching middle and high school math for decades. And if you need help learning math, check out my math help program at tcmathacademy.com. You can find a link to that in the description below. And if this video helps you out, or if you just enjoy this content, make sure to like and subscribe, as that definitely helps me out. All right, so once again, here is the problem. Now, just because you can't use a calculator doesn't mean that you have to do this problem fast, right? So the only rule is no calculator. But what you want to do here is, you know, show each step of the problem. So whatever answer you get, if you do this wrong, you hopefully can identify, you know, what you uh, did wrong so you can correct it. But let's go ahead and take a look at the right answer. The correct answer to this problem is C, negative 5. All right, now, if you got this right, well, you definitely get a happy face, an A+, plus, a 100%, and a certificate of excellence because you appear to be a certified expert in the order of operations, PEMDAS, and positive and negative numbers. Okay, so we're talking about basic math skills here, and if you didn't get this right, well, don't get discouraged. I'm going to do a quick review of all of this. Matter of fact, let's go to get started right now. All right, now, uh, this problem... You know, we have parentheses, we have some numbers, and these numbers right here, 4 minus 6 and 6 minus 4, for some of you, this might, you know, quickly, you might look at these and be like, oh, 6 minus 4, this is 2, and this is maybe 2 here as well. you got to be very careful because order definitely makes a difference when it comes to subtraction, okay? These two values here are not 2. One is 2 and one is not. But uh, what we need to do is understand the correct order to do this problem. So we have some parentheses. We have to figure out what's going on there. We have multiplication. We have subtraction right here, and we also have subtraction right here. So the first thing we need to do is to consider the correct order to do this problem. That's something called the order of operations. Okay, and we'll get into that in just one second. And then the next thing that we need to understand is how to work with positive and negative numbers. So you got to be very careful here because if you do this problem in all different sorts of ways, matter of fact, let's do it this way. Let's say uh, some of you might thought, oh, this is 2 and 2, maybe that's 2 times 2, that's 4 minus 1. Uh, that can maybe be 3. Right? Well, 3 looks pretty good. Well, unfortunately, that's wrong. And some of you might be like, ah, I must do YouTube math, man. This is why I don't like math. Well, stick with me for a couple minutes. And uh, for those of you that struggle with positive and negative numbers in the order of operations, I think I'm going to make this much easier to understand. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it right now. So to do this problem, we need to, again, understand the correct order of operations. In other words, in mathematics, things like addition, subtraction, multiplication, division, parentheses, powers, things like this, you know, these are... Uh, what we call mathematical operators, right? These are called grouping symbols, these are powers, but these right here are mathematical operations. And you will absolutely get different values for your uh, problems when you work them out, depending on what order you go in, right? If we do uh, addition and subtraction, then multiplication, then division last, that's gonna generate something different than uh, if we take the correct order. So what is the correct order to take? Well, it's this lovely little acronym right here. I'll explain this in just one second. So in order to do this problem right, we need to understand this, but we also need to understand this, and that is how to work with positive and negative numbers. So there's two things going on here, and let's go ahead and do a quick review of the first, and that is the order of operations. Okay, so here we have a lovely little acronym called PEMDAS. This is a checklist that goes from left to right. Now, if you follow this checklist, 
you will always take the correct order of operations in a math problem. Okay, so you'll do things, you know, again, and not in the wrong order. That's how you get wrong answers. All right, now there's a lovely little phrase or that kind of goes along with it, a mnemonic, a memory aid, and that is, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Once again, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. So I don't know what Aunt Sally did, but we thank her for her cool little phrase. This has been around forever. And uh, let me go ahead and explain this to you right now. Okay, so obviously these letters stand for something, and this is a checklist that goes from left to right. So P stands for parentheses. So if we see any parentheses in our problem, that's where we're going to start. Now, obviously our problem has parentheses, so that is going to be the starting point. But uh, this P really stands for grouping symbols. We can group numbers together with these type of uh, brackets or these kind of squiggly brackets. So that's what P stands for. Now, if you have like parentheses and then brackets like this and then another uh, kind of squiggly brackets, and this is one big math problem, you always start from the innermost parentheses and work yourself out. All right, so that's what P stands for. Okay, E stands for exponents, but you can think of it as power. So like something like two to the third power. So when you have a power, there's two parts to the power. This little top number up here in the top right, that's called the exponent. This bottom number down here is called the base. The entire thing is a power. So E stands for um, exponents, but it means powers. And it could be confusing, right? If we have P and then another P, we're like, well, parentheses and then parentheses again, or, you know, so that's why uh, we have E. All right, now M, D, A, and S, before I explain the rest of this, again, we're going from left to right. It's a checklist. If we have parentheses, we're going to do that. If we have powers, uh, exponents, we're going to uh, do that. Now the fun begins. We have M, D, A, and S. Now I, I say the fun begins because this is where a lot of students make a lot of errors. All right, now before I tell you the order here, let's just go ahead and define what these uh, letters stand for. So M is multiplication, D is division, A is addition, S is subtraction. So it's just kind of like logical that you're saying, all right, Mr. YouTube Math Man, I guess we're going to do all the multiplication uh, next because that's what comes, uh, you know, that's the next thing from left to right. That makes sense, but that is not right. Now, this is where students get really like upset. And they're like, this is why I don't like math. You tell me one thing and now it's like another thing. Well, uh, you know, you got to be very careful when it, you're learning the order of operations. So really what's going on here is that this is a group, okay? So what you're going to do is multiplication or division, whatever you see first from left to right. So if you see multiplication, then division. If you happen to have both operations in a problem, you do the multiplication first if it's, on, if it's the first thing you run to from left to right. If you see division and then multiplication, something like maybe 12 divided by 3 times 2, something like here, you would not do multiplication. Okay, You would do the division and then the multiplication. And you can see... Uh, this can really cause some problems if you don't do it in the wrong order. So 12 divided by 3 is 4. 4 times 2 is 8. Or we, if we did this wrong, we could go 3 times 2 is 6. 12 divided by 6 is 2, which is incorrect. So even on a simple little problem like this, uh, you can get this wrong if you don't understand the correct order of operations. All right, so addition and subtraction work the same way. It's whatever you see first from left to right. Okay, so that is PEMDAS. The correct order of operations and if you understand this then that's going to be uh, a huge kind of um, you know part of doing this problem okay now the next part of doing this problem is to have an understanding of positive and negative numbers and uh, this is another topic where a lot of students uh, make a lot of errors now it's easy i well, at least i think it's kind of easy it all depends of course how you were taught this stuff but I'm going to teach you in, uh, this in a very easy way. But it's also easy to make mistakes. Okay, so the only way you're going to get good at these rules is to practice them. So I'm going to give you a, qu a quick crash course on the rules of positive and negative numbers. All right, so here is uh, basically our situation. So we need to understand how to multiply, divide, add, and subtract positive and negative numbers. So the rule, okay, or the rules for multiplying and dividing positive and negative numbers is the same. It's super easy. I'll show you this in just one second. And effectively, the rules for adding and subtracting is the same. So all we need to do is understand two rules here, okay? If we understand 
this one rule and this one rule, we will have mastered how to do all these operations with positive and negative numbers. All right, so let's go ahead and start with multiplication and division because this is uh, super easy. So this is the way it works. If the signs, now the sign, what I'm talking about is if it's a negative or positive, this is the sign of a number. If the signs are the same, the answer is positive. Again, we're talking about multiplication and division. All right, this is multiplication and division. Don't confuse this with addition and subtraction. All right, so simple rule here. So if you're uh, multiplying, okay, a positive and positive, or dividing a positive into positive, the answer is positive. Negative times negative po is positive. Negative divided by negative, positive. All right, so again, uh, same sign, all right, the numbers have the same sign, the answer is positive. If the numbers have different signs, the answer is negative. Okay, and this is, the, again, the case for both multiplying and dividing. How easy is that? And you are 50% done with learning positive and negative number rules. Now, some of you might be saying, man, Mr. YouTube Math Man, how come my math teacher didn't teach me just the way you just taught me right there? Well, listen, you know, um, I'm just uh, kind of giving you something to kind of hold on to or remember, but you need to practice this to really get good at this stuff. All right, now here is addition and subtraction. So I want you to think of this as the same rule, and I want you to think money. So you might be saying, what are you talking about, Mr. YouTube Math Man? But if you're talking about money, I'm definitely going to watch your video a little bit more. Yes, yeah, so I want you to think in terms of money. I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about in a second. Now, remember, we are talking about adding and subtracting, okay, positive and negative numbers. So what we're going to do here for subtraction is our subtraction situation, we're going to turn subtraction problems into plus negative uh, situations, okay? So addition problems are already addition problems. Subtraction problems we're going to turn into addition problems as well, but it's going to be plus a negative. And then one little quick thing before I explain this, a negative of a negative, okay, because this comes up right here, is always a positive. This is the opposite of a negative. So a negative of a negative is a positive. So if you remember all these little things right here, then I can kind of start talking about this money situation, and uh, then we can do this problem. All right, so real quick. So money, all right? So this is how it works. So let's suppose, um, uh, well, let's just kind of set up this way. So if you have money, that's like a positive, uh, it, that's like a positive value. If you have money in your pocket or in your bank, that's a good thing, right? So we want to have money. Now, if you don't have money, now if you owe money, that's negative, all right? Uh, and so let me, I'll use blue. So negative $3 means that you owe, okay? So this is uh, like you owe someone, you have to pay this, this is a bill, this is debt however you want to think about it, okay? You don't have this money. It's outbound money. You have to pay this money back. This is money. Positive value is money that you have, right? So this is good. It's in your bank. And then you have uh, negative uh, numbers, okay, which are like a bill, a debt, something you owe. Okay, so let's do some quick financial scenarios here that are really easy to understand. So what if I have 10, okay, you tell me what you think this means, 10 plus uh, negative uh, 3, okay, negative $3, let me see if I can write it this way, negative uh, $3, okay, so 10 plus negative 3, now let's just kind of get rid of the uh, money part right here, and think of it this way, 10 plus negative 3, so what is this, you know, what do you think this can kind of mean in terms of money? Well, this means, hey, you have $10, but then you just got a bill for $3. Or somebody comes up to you and say, hey, give me back that $3 that I gave to you last week. You know, I want my money back. Okay. So what is your financial position here? Well, after you pay back this person their $3, you have uh, $7 left. All right? This is positive. And when it comes to positive values, we don't typically write the positive sign in front of it. So it's just by itself. Okay. Negative values, you'll have the negative sign. So if you just see a number by itself, that's implied to be positive. So 10 plus a negative 3 is equal to a positive 7. Okay. All right. So let's do another problem. And you'll get this as we go through this. What is this? Negative 12 plus a negative uh, 3. Okay. Well, negative 12 plus negative 3. What could this mean? Well, this means that you don't 
have any money, okay, and you have uh, this bill, all right, and you're like, oh, boy, I got to pay this bill, and you also ha uh, owe this. This is another uh, debt that you owe. So negative 12 plus negative 3 is what? Well, your total financial situation is you have negative $15, okay, that you owe, all right? So negative plus a negative in this case is negative, all right? So if you keep this in mind, you'll be, you know, this will really, really help. Now, I've been teaching this stuff for decades, and money seems to be the best analogy. Let's do another problem here. So what if we have negative uh, $8, okay? And, uh, and we're going to, let's say, um, add, uh, let's say six, okay? All right, so what could this mean? Well, this right here, let me kind of use a different color, blue. This might mean something like, uh, well, you owe, okay? You're like, boy, I owe uh, $8. I don't have any money, but I owe $8. Then, you know, you, maybe you, uh, you know, get lucky and you find $6 or whatever the case. Maybe uh, your grandparents uh, give you $6. They're like, here, I feel sorry for you. Here's $6. Oh, so you're very happy about that. So you owe your best friend $8. Your grandparents give you six dollars what is your financial situation well assuming you're going to pay back your uh, friend you're like hey i can't pay you back everything i'll give you the six dollars and i owe you two dollars okay so negative eight plus six is negative two all right so hopefully if you can keep this in mind all right this is really really going to help you out all right let's take a look at subtraction real quick and then uh we'll get into this problem so if we have 2 minus 10, 2 minus 10. So remember up here, I talked about, I want you to think of subtraction problems as plus and negative problems. So that means here, instead of subtraction, what you're going to do is you're going to take that subtraction and you're going to turn it into an addition problem. So you're going to go, okay, put it into, as an addition, and then you're going to take that a negative sign and you're going to attach it to the number to the right. Okay, so 2 minus 10, for example, I want you to think of as 2 plus a negative 10. Now, this is much easier because here is our financial situation. Uh, we have $2. We owe someone uh, $10. So when we give this person our $2, we still have $8 in debt. So 2 uh, plus negative 10 is negative 8, or 2 minus 10 is negative 8 because you're thinking about plus negative. All right, so hopefully... You know, this is a good review for some of you out there that, you know, have been confused about working with positive and negative, negative numbers. I just covered how to add, subtract, multiply, and divide, and we went over the order of operations PEMDAS. This is like a, a couple of chapters worth of basic math in a few minutes. All right, so let's put this all together by taking the next step, which, of course, is to start with our order of operations. All right, so PEMDAS, P-E-M-D-A-A-S, that is the correct order of operations, and we're just going to use it as a checklist, right? So we're going to start from left to right, and I'm going to ask myself, all right, do I have parentheses? Obviously, we do. So that means I'm going to have to do what's inside each of these parentheses before I take the next step. Now, inside of the parentheses, whatever math that you might have going on there, you could have multiplication, division, addition, uh, powers. You kind of have to use the, the checklist over and over again inside of the parentheses. But the idea here is before we do anything else, we have to finish, we have to get this answer, we have to get this answer. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that right now. But before we do, I need you to do this, and that is to hit that subscribe button, all right? I need your help. I need your help to help other people. <laughs> I've been on YouTube for well over 10 years. Um, I'm like over 90 million views. It's kind of crazy to me that I've, I've uh, had that many views, but I'm happy that I have because it makes me feel like maybe I have helped some people out. And uh, I'm very grateful to have um, continued to grow my channel, but I really want to take it to the biggest level as I possibly can because as a math teacher, I'm passionate about really getting people to understand math. But I need your help, and the best way you can uh, support this channel is just simply hit that subscribe button. It really does help that YouTube algorithm and hit that notification bell as well so you can get my latest videos. All right, so let's go ahead and get into this problem now that we are experts in the order of operations positive negative numbers. So here we have subtraction, right? So four minus six. So we got to do uh, what's inside this parenthesis and this parenthesis. So subtraction. Okay. So we'll, what are we going to do with subtraction? We're going to do plus negative. So four minus six 
is going to be the same thing as 4 plus a negative 6. Okay, so this will help those of you out there that struggle with positive and negative numbers, you know, to make sure you get the right answer. You don't make any errors. So 6 minus 4. Now, most of you or a lot of you out there are like, yeah, it's 2, 2, math, man. I already know the answer is positive 2. Yes, but for those of you that struggle with this, again, you can always do this plus negative business. So 6 plus a negative 4. And we can see the results of doing that. All right, so 4 plus a negative 6, we have more debt than we have money. So this is going to be a negative 2. And here we have more money than we have debt. So we're actually going to have some money left over. So this is going to be negative 2 times. When you have parentheses like this separated or one parenthesis touching another parenthesis like so, this is multiplication. All right, so we have negative 2 times negative 2. Effectively, this problem is the same thing now as negative 2 times, a, I'm sorry, negative 2 times a positive 2 minus 1. Okay, so again, we go and revisit PEMDAS order of operations. We're always going to have to do multiplication before subtraction. So we need to figure out what negative 2 times positive 2 is equal to. And remember the rule for multiplying and dividing positive and negative numbers. If the signs are different, we have a negative and positive, the answer is going to be uh, negative. All right, so 2 times 2 is 4, and this is going to be negative because the signs are different. So that's negative 4 minus 1. All right, so again, uh, this can be confusing to somebody out there. Don't get confused and don't get ahead of yourself. Be like, all right, well, let me just do the plus negative stuff that Mr. YouTube Math Man told me, so plus negative. So now our problem is a negative 4 plus a negative 1. So uh, we owe someone uh, $4, and we know we owe another person a dollar, so we have a total of $5 in debt. Okay, so negative 5 is our answer. So we just covered a ton of math here. Now, I know this video went a little bit longer, but my videos are not designed to be like, hey, watch me solve this problem in 90 seconds. I can clearly do this, okay? What I'm trying to do is teach you something that can go into your long-term memory so you can improve long-term in mathematics, but you can't improve in math unless you practice, okay? And if you're still struggling struggling with this stuff or you want to really practice, you need to check out my full main math courses. I'm going to leave links to those in the description of this video, but uh, I would encourage uh, those of you to check out like my math foundations course, my math skills rebuilder course, or maybe my pre-algebra course. All of these courses deal with kind of basic level math, kind of the skills that we're talking about. Okay, so with all that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your math adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.